All right, so one more example using the Pythagorean theorem. So in this problem, we have a ladder of x plus 10 feet, and it's positioned x feet away from a wall. And the ladder is going to reach a height of x plus 8 feet along the wall. And what we want to do is find the value of x. So again, I'm just going to make a little picture. Uh, here's the ground. There's the wall of the building. Um, and here's our ladder sitting next to the wall. OK, so again, the thing to observe is, hey, we've got a little right triangle here that the ladder has made with the wall and the ground, assuming it's a, a nice flat surface. OK, if we know that the ladder has a, a length of x plus 10 feet, uh, it reaches a height of x plus 8 feet. And we know that it has a, it's x feet away from the wall, so I'm going to label that as x. So again, maybe we can you know, kind of redraw our, our right triangle. This is x plus 10, x plus 8, and x. So now we can simply use the Pythagorean theorem on this right triangle to solve for x. So what we're going to get is we'll have to take one of, the, one of the legs, or the short sides. So we would have x squared plus the other side, which is x plus 8 squared. And we'll set that equal to the hypotenuse squared, or x plus 10 squared. OK, so now we've got an equation that we're going to have to do our arithmetic on. OK, so x squared is just x squared. Again, I'm going to write this out as x plus 8 times x plus 8. To remind myself, I have to distribute. We've got x plus 10 times x plus 10. OK, so again, the x squared, I'm just going to drop it down. I would, when I start distributing, I'll have an x times an x, which would give me an x squared. x times 8 is 8x. We're going to have another 8x from the inside, which is going to give us a positive 16x. 8 times 8 is positive 64. And then if I distribute things out on the right-hand side, I'm going to have x times x, or x squared. x times 10 is 10x. I'm going to have another 10x on the inside, which will give me 20x. And then 10 times 10 is positive 100. So again, a little bit of simplification that we still have to do here. OK, so on the left side, we have x squared plus x squared, which is going to be 2x squared plus 16x plus 64. And on the right side, we have x squared plus 20x plus 100. Nothing to really combine there. And again, now I just say, well, hey, this is a, a quadratic equation. I know how to solve quadratic equations. I make one side equal to 0 and either try to factor it or use the quadratic formula. So again, I like the coefficient on the x squared to be positive. So since the, the left side has a bigger number, a bigger coefficient, I'm going to make the right side equal to 0. So if I subtract x squared from both sides, 2x squared minus x squared would be 1x squared. If I subtract 20x from both sides, 16x minus 20x would be negative 4x. And then if I subtract 100 from both sides, 64 minus 100 would be negative 36. Okay. So now the right side is equal to 0. So now I start thinking about factors of 36. Two numbers that multiply to negative 36 but add up to negative 4. I think I said that correctly. Multiply to negative 36, add up to negative 4. 1 and 36, that's not going to work. Some combination of that. 2 and 18, that doesn't work. Uh, 3 and 13, that doesn't work. 4 and 9, that's pretty close, but that doesn't work. Um, let's see, 6 and 6, I don't think so. And now um, I think everything's just repeating itself. So this is one it looks like I'm going to have to use the quadratic formula on. So let's see, A has value 1, B has value negative 4, and C has value negative 36. So it says we take negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. All right, so we're having fun. Um, 
So we've got a negative, negative 4, which is going to be positive 4. Negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. Let's see, uh, we've got a negative times a negative, so that's going to be a positive. 4 times 36, let's see, 4 times 30 is 120. 4 times 6 is 24. Um, so 120 and 24 would give us 144 over 2. 4 plus or minus, okay. 16 and 144, that's going to give us 160 over 2. And I'm going to approximate now the square root of 160 um, just to kind of get a real life feel for what value here we're actually using. So let's see, um, my old calculator, so the square root of 160, I'm getting that to be roughly equal to 12.65, okay, if we round to the second decimal place. So it says we're going to get roughly equal to, that's the curvy lines if you haven't seen those, usually, an, so now we're approximating, plus or minus, okay, 12.65 over 2. So again, to our quadratic equation, we have two solutions, but notice if we use the negative, 4 minus 12.65 will be a negative number when we divide by 2. So that one doesn't really make sense to use. So it says the only solution that even makes sense in this problem would be to use the positive one. And if we add uh, 4 to 12.65, we'll get 16.65. And then if we divide that by 2, what is that? 8 point uh, uh, 3.25, I do believe. Uh, so that looks good to me. It's a long day, though. I'm going to check it here just to make sure. Uh, did it? Okay, hey, that makes sense. Okay. All right, um, so again, you know, kind of tedious here. You just really need to be careful. I think on these problems, one of the things you really need to be careful about is just kind of really distributing everything out, collecting your like terms, making it into a, a nice quadratic, and then just going from there.